Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be discussing how the thyroid gland works. In other words, we're gonna be taking a dive into thyroid physiology, and it's not gonna be as complicated as you might think. And if you are somebody who suspects they have a thyroid problem or knows that they have a thyroid problem, this information is so important because it's gonna help you better understand whether or not you are being treated correctly by your doctor. Because believe it or not, a lot of doctors look at this in a very one-dimensional way and they miss out on some of the more complex problems that can cause thyroid-related issues. So let's start here. Again, I promise it's not gonna be as confusing as it looks. So uh, what I wanna highlight here is that in this box up at the top, which is what I'm looking at right here, this area occurs inside of the brain, which is what I have that highlighted. So the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland are inside of the brain and they help to regulate your thyroid. They also help to regulate, by the way, many other hormones, but so this system is very similar in the case of, let's say, uh, balancing and regulating your cortisol levels as well as estrogen levels and testosterone levels, um, but we're focusing primarily on the thyroid today. So in the very beginning, the very first step is inside of your brain, you have something called the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus produces something called TRH. The job of TRH is to stimulate the pituitary gland, which again is also found in the brain. They're actually pretty close to one another. And TRH stimulates the pituitary gland to produce TSH. Now TSH is the thing that a lot of you know about and we're gonna be talking about that in just a minute here. The job of TSH, which is aptly named, it's called thyroid stimulating hormone. And the thyroid stimulating hormone travels from your brain to your neck, which is where your thyroid gland sits. It then interacts on the thyroid gland and tells your thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4. These are the two thyroid hormones, the two most important thyroid hormones. There are others, which we'll talk about um, a little bit later, but those are not nearly as important as T4 and T3. So when it comes to the production of these thyroid hormones, about 80% is T4 and about 20% is T3. So the majority is in the form of T4. But here's the catch, that T4 is not active by itself. It doesn't have the biological action that you want thyroid hormone to have, so your body must convert it, which is why we have this right here called thyroid conversion. So that T4 gets converted to T3, and then it is T3 which does all of the heavy lifting and all the things that you want thyroid hormone to do inside of your body. And that occurs inside of your cells. So your body converts T4 into T3, T3 travels into the nucleus inside of your cells, it changes your physiology by altering genetic transcription, and it causes the production of enzymes and proteins, which you can see here. And then those enzymes and proteins impact things like your metabolism, they help your hair grow, they help your mental cognition so you don't have brain fog, they help with energy production inside of the cells, increase heat production, and so on. They pretty much do everything that you want to have happen inside of your body. That's mediated by the action of T3 on your cells. And then from there, so that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. And then the way that your body regulates this whole system, it uses T3 and by the way, T4. So T4 here, this can also come over here. And then this feedback, it feeds back all the way up to the top, which is what this is. And it either tells the hypothalamus to produce more or less TRH, depending on how much it senses inside of the body. So what, this, is, this is how the physiology is supposed to work in the healthy state. Now what happens when you have a thyroid problem, which is what a lot of people end up with. Now the two most common are hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Hypo meaning you have uh, not enough, so that means your thyroid function is low, and hyper means you have too much. Now between the two of these, hypothyroidism is probably about 10 times more common uh, than hyperthyroidism. So that's why you'll see most people will focus primarily on hypothyroidism just by virtue of the fact that more people have that condition. Now, when we're talking about hypothyroidism, since that's the most common, the problem normally occurs inside of the thyroid gland. So there's a problem with the production of thyroid hormone inside of the neck, inside of the thyroid gland. And this is almost always due to the autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. But that's not the only cause of hypothyroidism. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I'll give you one example. Another example would be iodine deficiency. So if you don't have enough iodine, your thyroid gland can't produce thyroid hormones like T4 and T3, so the problem will still be in the thyroid gland, but it will be for a different reason than the problems that occur with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hashimoto's is the autoimmune disease and it destroys the thyroid gland, so it can't produce T4 and T3. So then what happens is, 
the sequence of, sequence of events that occurs here is that when the thyroid gland can't produce enough thyroid hormone, T3 and T4 levels fall, right? Because the thyroid can't produce it. And then TRH levels increase because the brain is saying, hey, we're not, we don't have enough thyroid hormone outside in the peripheral tissues. We need to do something about this. So it kicks up the production of TRH to try and stimulate the thyroid gland. So TRH increases the stimulation of TSH. And then TSH is trying to yell at the thyroid gland to produce more, but it can't because there's something wrong with it. So the way that your doctor checks for this whole, all of the problems that I just mentioned is by ordering one test and that is the TSH. And that I think is the big problem because the reality is that the TSH is really only looking at one part of this very complex system. And you can't check for much more than that, by the way, by the way, but doctors will routinely check for just TSH. But remember, you can have a problem in the hypothalamus, you can have a problem in the pituitary, you can have a problem in the thyroid gland, and you can also have a problem, if you notice here, inside of your cells. So you can have what's called thyroid resistance. And the TSH doesn't check for any of these things. You can kind of indirectly assess whether there's a problem, but you can get a lot of false positives or false negatives by just looking at the TSH, which is why you need more than just the TSH if you want to adequately assess thyroid function. You should be getting the TSH, of course, which we talked about. You should also be getting free T3, free T4, and thyroid antibodies. These are the baseline tests that every patient who suspects that they have a thyroid problem should get because this assesses much more than just the impact of the pituitary gland on thyroid function. Yes, it is true that most of the time, most thyroid problems are, uh, occur at the level of the thyroid gland, but just by looking at this, and if you're only assessing the TSH, you're missing thyroid resistance because you may very well have an adequate amount of T3 inside of your body, but that's not the problem. The problem is how sensitive your cells are to that T3 level. Much in the same way, by the way, that people have issues with insulin levels when they have insulin resistance. They have plenty of insulin, uh, but that insulin is not doing its job inside of the cells. So if, you are, if you're not looking at these free T3 and free T4 levels, which are the thyroid hormone, um, uh, thyroid hormone levels inside of your blood, you'd, you would assume that everything is okay because these levels may be normal, but the reality is they're not doing their jobs at the cellular level. In addition, just ordering the TSH, you miss out on potential issues with the hypothalamus, um, thyroid resistance, and then also you can have issues with thyroid conversion as well. So my recommendation to anybody who, who expect or suspects that they have a thyroid problem is to get this full set of labs, which I'll also include in the description below so that you can adequately assess thyroid function. If you suspect that you have a thyroid problem, I'd recommend checking out this video next, which goes over all 10 thyroid lab tests and how they work and what they test for inside of your body.